Imagine a year when all media is clickbait now. You look at a title, you go look at it, and boom, it's not the thing you thought it was gonna be. Wow, that sounds awful, Zach. What year is that? What do you mean? Well, it's not the year you're thinking of, because it's actually 1948. <laughs> That was, that was absolutely wild. I just fell out of that portal after escaping a prison last week. Oh my god. Oh, I hope you're okay, Orphan. Are you okay? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Don't say it's a mystery when it includes your fucking physical health, you little scoundrel. <coughs> Ooh. Ow! Oh my god. The fucking, the inventor of the microwave followed us through the portal. God damn it. Uh, oh, hey there. Well, my importance to the plot is finished, so I'm just gonna leave. Oh, okay. Bye, Mr. Microwave Man. That's weird. Where the fuck are we? We're in a forest? Is this a forest? Or is this a nature reserve? I, I, I don't know where we are. It's 1948, though, and my name's Sandro, and this is Oldie But A Goodie. And this week, we're reviewing Tarzan and the mermaids, but there are no mermaids. That's what we're going to be reviewing. But first, I've got to find someone that my co-host, Zach, can body jump into so we can do a bloody podcast. I wonder if there's any people around in 1948, or are they all dead? <coughs> oh, I hear coughing. Let us walk towards the sound, Orphan? Orphan? Does that mean my mummy and daddy are fucking dead? Sorry for swearing, my normal child. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, there's, there's people here. How may I help you, good sir? Why, I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for a quiet room out of this jungle slash nature reserve. It could even just be someone's backyard. I don't know where we are or when we are. This is uh, the Grand Park of London, sir. <laughs> oh, the Grand Park of London. Yes. You're practically in everyone's backyard, if you think about it. Oh, because you go around and you steal people's stuff and put it in your garden. Wait, that's your museum. Never mind, I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking of something else. I mean, yes, yes, you're thinking of our museum, which is quite different. No, the garden does feature plants from exotic places where we've stolen artifacts from. Oh, no, you've stolen some seeds as well and put them in your garden. Yes, so we can cross-pollinate things and uh, mess up the ecosystem here as well. Mm -hmm. And create broccoli, which is a man-made vegetable. Whoa, that's an interesting fact. I'm the one that's supposed to give interesting <laughs> facts here, you fuck. <laughs> Don't take my bit. <laughs> Who are you? I'm John Desmond Barnell. Oh, that's a nice name. Yes. And I really should have an Irish accent, but I went with a London accent, because that's who I am. That's fair enough. I, uh, been working on this new interesting x-ray device. Oh, an x-ray device. Oh my, what is this? What's it called? Is it just called x-ray device? What? It, it, n no. It, it's an X- Have you not heard of an X-ray? I don't know. What is an X-ray? But that, that has been around for a long time already. Um, we've been using this X-ray to take photographs of, uh, hydrated protein crystals. Oh, and you know me, I am a gamer, and there's nothing I like more than chugging some protein crystals and then getting into a game of Apex Legends and dying within the first 30 seconds because I'm playing Apex Legends. I'm convinced you're a crazy person. I'm going to call the police. <laughs> oh no, you're calling the police on that. On what phone? What? I don't know. I wouldn't use a phone. By call, I mean yell for them, obviously. Oh, no, I sure hope that something magical happens to stop him from yelling. <laughs> hey, Zach, hello. Hey, are we in a jungle? That's appropriate for this week's episode. Nice work, Sandro. Yeah, uh, I, I... No time has passed between when we last talked and now. I oh. fell through the portal, ended up in this garden, and now... We're doing the. Po I haven't even seen Tarzan and the mermaids yet. <laughs> oh well, how about we how about I leave and come back in an hour after you watch the movie? How's that sound? That sounds like a good idea. A uh, two the bat. 
cinema. <laughs> wow, that's copyright, I think. Oh my fucking god! Why the fuck did you pick this movie, Zach? What is <laughs> what is actually wrong with you? <laughs> Look, we've all made mistakes in pickings before, right? <laughs> Like, I can't remember your last one, but I'm sure you picked a bad one before. Sure I have, recently. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this one, uh, this is a bit of a yikes. <laughs> this, um, so Tarzan and the Mermaids, it's the fucking 12th Tarzan movie, the final Tarzan movie in the series that was running from the 30s to the 40s. <laughs> I can see why. And, uh, Jesus fucking- so- so- I don't even know where to begin with this one. <laughs> well, let's begin with Tarzan. Hey, have you seen the Disney Tarzan? I have. It's pretty good. It's a fun movie. I like that movie. But what if what if the Tarzan from that movie was a middle-aged white man that looked <laughs> slightly portly with well-cut hair and just cultural appropriation? Just... Just racism. Just everywhere. What if you made a movie that was just racism? Yeah. <laughs> That's this week's film. I mean, it could have been worse, but it could have been a lot better. Uh, I mean, it, it, it could have been Song of the South. Yes. But uh, instead, we got more of a... We got more of a... Uh, what the fuck was that movie that we did? Alan Quartermain? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Where it's like, it's literally white savior... Yup. For a white bad guy... Who is controlling dumb native? It's like oh, yep. <laughs> oh. Um, we'll get into some, I guess, some plot stuff. We'll do non-spoilers and then spoilers. Does anybody care about spoilers for Tarzan and the Mermaids, the last Tarzan movie of all the live-action Tarzans throughout the 1900s? I don't, I don't think so. But I do want to talk a little bit about the past of Tarzan, the past yep, of them, the and history. more. I just want to read every single title of these Tarzan movies and then laugh at them. The guy playing Tarzan, his name is Johnny Weissmuller, um, and he's got a funny, he's got a funny, uh, a, a funny backstory. Because oh, if yeah. you remember, um, the guy who played Flash Gordon when we did Flash Gordon, he was in the Olympics, right? Yep, which makes sense. You know, you get a very fit, strong guy to play an action hero. He was less of an actor, which was unfortunate, but I think he did pretty well. Yeah. Uh, well, for the role of Tarzan, they did the same thing. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, he was an Olympic swimmer ah. um, during the 20s. And then, yeah, went on to, to become an actor. No wonder they made a water one. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Because I, I was going to say, for a middle-aged white man, he did swim quite well. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, like, he'd, he'd probably stop training a little bit. Like, yeah. like, he's getting a bit old. That's why this is his last one. And he did pretty well. Like, the thing about this movie is it's pretty terrible, but the action is decent. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the punch-ups are kind of okay. <laughs> they were fun. They were fun. I liked them. And Tarzan definitely wasn't the worst part of this film. I thought he was all right. I like this version of Tarzan. My thing was when he started speaking in broken English, which is yeah. what Tarzan, you know, that's how he talks. The problem is this entire movie is racist. So as soon as he started doing that, my racism alarms just went off again. <laughs> they were constantly going off throughout the movie, but yeah. Yeah. Your your house was practically a siren at that point. You know, the racism alarm was just going off. People were concerned. I I heard it from here, and I'm ages away, so it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. But I think Tarzan, he he was all right. I think it would have been better in his first couple of movies, obviously. Yeah, well, he was playing the character for about 16 years, so this wow. is uh, the tail end. Long uh, time. Yeah, so he started playing Tarzan in the 30s. This is the final film he did, 1948. The same year, in 1948, he jumped from Tarzan to a completely different franchise, a separate franchise, nothing to do with Tarzan. It's called Jungle Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and how long did Jungle Jim go for? Uh, that went from 1948 to uh, 1954. Wow. So about six years he spent playing Jungle Jim. Who was a different character. He is an Asia-based hunter called Jim Bradley. Uh-oh. 
It's essentially him going into the jungle and saving dames and other things like that. Yeah. And probably a lot of white savior stuff again. Most most likely. So yeah, he did that for a bunch. But his Tarzan movies, there's so many of them, and the titles are fucking hilarious. So Tarzan the Ape Man was the first one, obviously. Classic, classic. That's a good one. Yep, yep. Tarzan and his mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just two blokes. They're hanging out, you know? Oh yeah, it's me, my Tarzan mate. No, it's oh, a- yeah. No, they're referring to Jane. Yeah. They're referring to Jane as mean. Yeah, I get it. They're fucking. Tarzan escapes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Well, I guess that kind of spoils what ha- the ending <laughs> of <the> Tarzan's <laughs> mate, doesn't it? It does a little bit. Or oh, Tarzan finds a son. Okay, I presume that's S O N. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't go to space and be like, that's the sun. Do you know what that is? That's probably that monkey that we kept seeing in this film. No, 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 no. You're wrong, Zach. It is the character of Boy. (laughs) And they spend about five minutes of Tarzan and the Mermaids explaining why Boy isn't in this movie because he went off to school. (laughs) Oh, I totally missed that. Oh, he wasn't in this film. Ah, damn. He sounds like the best character. No wonder this film went downhill. You've got Tarzan's secret treasure. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'll show you my secret treasure. I knew you were going to make that joke. <laughs> and then you've got Tarzan's New York Adventure. And the poster, <laughs> of the, the poster of Tarzan's New York Adventure is Tarzan swinging on a vine. He's swinging on a vine. And then New York's behind him. I don't understand... How he's got a vine? Is he swinging through Central Park? Yeah, he seems Central very Park. high above the skyline. It's just how like Spider Man can you know zip around everywhere. Don't just don't worry about it. Just don't question it. So that was the final movie to feature the character of Jane for a little bit. After that, we've got Tarzan Triumphs, which is about Tarzan fighting the Nazis. Whoa! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the Tarzan I want to see. Yeah. Me Tarzan, me punch Nazi. <laughs> and then that is followed up by Tarzan's desert mystery. Uh-oh. In which he continues to fight Nazis, but this time he's in the Middle East. Hang on a second. <laughs> this is just Indiana Jones, but with a guy who speaks in the third person. <laughs> And then after that, Jane is back. They bring Jane back, and they have Tarzan and the Amazons. Ooh. Mm. I mean, if it's the Amazons, it could be Amazon woman, which means it's going to be sexist this time instead of racist. Well, that is definitely the plot of the sequel to that film, Tarzan and the Leopard Women. (laughs) Oh, no! It got worse! How did it get worse? Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, but the final movie before Tarzan and the Mermaids is Tarzan and the Huntress. They really went all in. The four last Tarzan movies are stuff to do with women. That's it's like all oh, scantily clad women in the movie. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. Yeah. But then it's like after that, they recast Tarzan as Lex Barker, and his first movie is called Tarzan's Magic Fountain. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that goes well after the <laughs> secret treasure. <laughs> and in that movie, it features the same Jane as mermaids. Right. So I guess they they recast Tarzan, but continue the story of Tarzan throughout the movie. Anyway, they're the Then it just continues. It just keeps... They just keep making them until the 60s and no one cares anymore. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's interesting. I I was wondering, his magic fountain, is that like eternal youth? And that's how he's actually been in the jungle for thousands of years? Oh, maybe. But because because for that thousand years, he didn't understand the concept of years and dates and other things. He doesn't really know how long he's been there. Well, yeah, the plot is an aviator went missing 20 years... Years ago, Tarzan and Jane hear news of a man back in the United States who's about to be sentenced for life imprisonment. Yeah. The only way he could be cleared is for the aviator's testimony. So Tarzan goes to find the person who went missing and brings her back to testify. But she looks a lot younger than she is meant to be. And so there's like fountain of youth. And then they go try and find it. Whoa. That seems to be the plot of that one. And so it was the fountain of youth. Wow, that was easy. I called that one. They did a Pirates of the Caribbean 4. Yep. Everyone's favourite Pirates of the Caribbean, I think. 
It is amazing, though. Like, Tarzan as a character, as you said, the definitive version for most people who are alive nowadays would be the animated one. But they keep, like, it was a thing back in the day, and they keep trying to make it a thing again. Like, we got a yeah. Tarzan movie maybe six years ago that was fucking terrible. Like, they just keep trying to bring it back. They, they ba- try and bring it back, but no one cares. No one cares. Because the whole point was, a lot of, a lot of Tarzan popularity is the mystery of the jungle, right? Because it was an unexplored area which people didn't know much about. So you could put anything in there and people would be like, wow, that could be real. You know, it sparks the imagination. This man lost in the joke. Nowadays, it's like, well, obviously this is dumb. Yeah. I don't think it works nowadays, unfortunately. They ha- they have to move on. Yeah, just move on. I think, <laughs> just, um, move on. just move on from Tarzan. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, find, just, move on. just, just find someone else. Just go to the Jungle Book. We got a recent Jungle Book movie. Oh. It was pretty good. It was terrible. It sucked. No, you're wrong. <laughs> you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but you like it, so I'm continuously going to go on the narrative that it was garbage. <laughs> like, with Tarzan as well, though, it's like, if you want to bring it back, I didn't finish watching Jungle Cruise with The Rock, but you do something like that, where it's, like, mm. basically Pirates of the Caribbean, but Tarzan. Oh, that's true. You could just make it a rock movie, because it, would, it wouldn't be Tarzan, it would be a rock movie. Or ro- oh, The Rock as Tarzan. Yeah, yeah, The Rock as Tarzan. But here's the thing, right? That's just a rock movie. It wouldn't be a Tarzan movie. It would be a rock movie. Like every movie that The Rock's in, it just turns into The Rock. Like, it it would be added to that pile of photos where this photo was taken of The Rock next to all the other ones of just him in a jungle, in, in like a uniform. It's like, tell me which movie these are from. Because they're all five of them are a different movie, and they all look exactly the same. That's true. That's what it would turn into. But that's fine, because I would still enjoy the movie. I think The Rock as Tarzan, that... Like, he's trying to find a franchise, right? He couldn't make Black Adam work. Um, He wasn't the star of Fast and Furious, so he left that, but he's back again now. Like, Mm. he... He needs a franchise that he's the head of. And Tarzan as The Rock? Yeah. No, the other way around. The Rock as Tarzan, yeah. The Rock as Tarzan. And you call it Tarzan's Massive Rock, and that's the title (laughs) of the movie. (laughs) God damn it. But uh, that would be fun, though. You just do a Fast and the Furious on the Tarzan franchise. You just put fucking Hobbs and or Shaw, whatever the fuck his name is, and he just goes in the jungle and now he's Tarzan? That's not what I meant. (laughs) Okay. I meant, I meant, like... You just take it off the walls. You start off with, oh, Tarzan, whatever. And then you just go crazy, which is what I thought this movie was going to be, where they were just going crazy, but this was very tame. I want them to just bring, like, magic into it, superhero, all this bullshit, and Tarzan has to deal with all this shit, you know? And he's like, I, me not know this all bullshit. Yeah, well, Tarzan and the mermaids, as you, yeah, the title suggests that there would be magical mermaids, or at least some sirens, something. Yeah, or at least, you know, you could have, you could have the mermaid quotation marks, like, they have, like, flippers or something, and, like, but they're mermaid shaped, they're, like, things, and, like, only honorary people of the tribe, they become, quote unquote, mermaid status, and then they get these special tails that are actually, like, make them super fast in the water, and that's why they're- No, it's just some lady they fish up from the river. (laughs) Yeah, so Tarzan and the mermaids, first of all, it should be called Tarzan and the mermaid, because they call her a mermaid, because, yeah, she's in a river- they put a fishing net over her, and then they capture her. Yeah, we've sort of spoiled it for you, but um, the whole the whole title's clickbait. The whole title is fake, and even in the movie, they acknowledge that calling her a mermaid is a tall tale. In yeah. the movie, they say that. Yeah, they literally say that. That made me so mad. I was like, "You motherfuckers!" Because because yeah, the guy's explaining to the commissioner is like a mermaid, and he's like. Well, not actually. I'm actually exaggerating. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, fuck you. Ah, oh, fuck you. You fucking bastards. But yeah, what this movie actually is, ah, uh, we'll talk about that in spoilers. It's just a lot of racism. The whole movie is a lot of racism, and then it ends with 15 minutes of people doing sports. <laughs> yeah, it does that classic thing where the movie, like, ends... And then they come up with an extra 15 minutes of padding to add on to the end so they can, you know, have a thing. I mean, the the movie is already only an hour long as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. So they add all this padding. But also, 
Uh, the second ending was pretty good, though. I like that. That was the ending I was more expecting. Yeah. So the first ending felt, like, weird. So, yeah. It's very odd. Um, some fun facts about this movie. We really can't talk anything plot without getting in the, in, into spoilers, so we'll rate it in a second. But first fun thing about this movie, this is the first Tarzan movie to be filmed outside of the United States because they filmed this one in Mexico. I mean, it looked nice. It was cool. Jungle. Yeah. Jungle was cool. Jungle was cool. I like him as Tarzan, but it's very obvious that he's been doing this for, like, he's been in this role for a while and he's, like, comfortable now. Yeah. Because he's not trying. He's just coasting. Yeah, he's just kind of there. And and the movie treats him as just kind of there. He doesn't get as much screen time as I thought he would. Well, no, it opens with 15 minutes of, or maybe like 10, but it felt like 15 minutes of like the mermaid character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's kind of the main character in this anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then Jane is hanging around. Well, here's the thing. This is just an episode. This is an episode of a series, and that's the sort of problem. It doesn't work well as a movie so much nowadays, because, like, we're looking at it back as a movie, because that's how it was distributed. But really, it was more... Back then, a lot of movies like this one, especially the 12th edition of is like an episode of a show. Just a long episode of a show, right? So it, it, it kind of acts like a TV show. Pretty much. Like, it's like one a year, every year you go see the Tarzan, or maybe there's two a year, or three episodes of Jungle Gym a yeah. year as well. Three <laughs> Jungle Gym episodes a year. You go to the, the cinema and see that. Oh, I gotta get me some jungly gyms. I kinda wanna do the one. We won't. We're yeah. not going to. But I kinda wanna watch an episode of Jungle Gym. <laughs> That's going to be an Alex Quartermain situation for sure. Oh, it's going to be so fucking terrible <laughs> and racist. But yeah, I liked the monkey in this though. They've got a monkey called Cheetah. There's a racist character in this called Benji, who is a sheik. It's a white guy in like a straw hat mm. with a mustache and he's doing a pretty bad accent. I don't even know what fucking part of the world he's meant to be from. It's like a vaguely racist like spanish slash mexican accent yeah i was gonna say like he's vaguely spanish yeah but he um like he's got a guitar and cheetah steals the guitar and starts playing the guitar himself and going rah, 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 and then falls out of a tree but catches the guitar as well it's great i loved everything with that monkey it was so good that poor monkey was probably so sad on set just the worst yeah but it was, <laughs> it was good it was a good monkey in the movie yeah was, monkey was the best actor for sure Anyway, that's all that we can say in non-spoilers. Zach, is it an oldie or a goodie? Oldie! Yeah. And not just because the film's bad, but because it's racist. <laughs> yep. It's, uh, it's, it's not good. It's not great. That's it. It wasn't, it wasn't good. It, it, the problem is it wasn't so bad it's good. No, it wasn't the Son of Kong. No. It wasn't the Son of Kong. No, Son of Kong was... was it, it, a movie, but uh, this one, yeah, this is an episode, and here's the thing, with the, without watching the other ones, they have no investment, and it's just bad, and racist, and dumb, and I got clickbaited! Yep. There was no mermaids! I want some magical mermaids. You did the Curse of the Cat People, and you got clickbaited there, now yeah. you did Tarzan and the Mermaids, you, you, I'm you falling can- <laughs> for it! I didn't think they had clickbait back in the day, but that's all they had back in the day. Because <laughs> that's how they get people in to watch their shitty movies, they're just like, let's come up with dumb titles. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was not, it wasn't as funny as Son of Kong, but it's got a, a level of so bad it's good for me, but that's because I was expecting it to be boring. And this movie isn't boring, because there's so much racism for you to yell at, which keeps you entertained throughout the movie. Yeah, like, it wasn't bad, but it was racist, and I don't care, so, Aldi, just go watch the Disney film or something, you know. And not a live-action remake, if they do one, because they probably will. Well, that weird break right there in the middle of a sentence means that it's time for a podcast ad by me, Selly McSeller. And I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, oh gosh, I love Nicolas Cage and I want Sandro and Zach to talk about Nicolas Cage. And that's what they're doing right now on the product I'm about to sell you. It's called Patreon. There's bonus episodes. They're doing a K-drama right now, and they talked about the Nick Cage movie, Mom and Dad, here's a clip. The mom is going through a midlife crisis by questioning things, but uh, the dad, uh, he built a pool table without telling yeah. the wife about it. He, he is starting a man cave, yeah, essentially. in the basement, and then she's like, why the fuck, you don't even like pool? And then he's like, you're right. 
you're right, I do. And then he gets a sledgehammer and he's like, you put your one you foot, foot in. in. <laughs> you put your one foot out. Shake it all about. And then he's like smashes the pool table with a sledgehammer. I I doubt that was in the I doubt the hokey <laughs> oh, pokey yeah, yeah, was yeah, in yeah. the script. I, sure. That was full Nick Cage just coming through. I know what you're thinking. Wow, that clip was really cool. I want to hear the whole episode. And you can by going over to patreon.com forward slash oldie with a goodie pod and subscribing. You also get ad-free episodes and, and sometimes they're early too. That's all Patreon. Link in the description. I'm Sally McSeller. Yeehaw! Alright, let's get into spoilers of Tarzan. Movie opens. There's a river. Did you know? TLDR. There is a river. Oh my god, the river. But where does the river go? It goes to the ocean. Oh my god, what a twist! I know. That's how rivers work. I'm glad the movie explains it. It does. And at the the, uh, edge of this uh, river, at the the ocean, there is a generic tribe. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Generic (laughs) African tribe. Yep. Except they're more Aztec. Yeah. They're like weirdly Aztec-y. I don't know. And they're these uh, water tribe people. Oh, no, Zach, their name is the Aquaticans. <laughs> it's the name. <laughs> the sorry, name. I'm so sorry I forgot their name. The Aquaticans. The Aquaticans, thank you. The Aquaticans, very vital that I use their name. They, uh, yeah, as soon as they popped it on screen, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, mermaids, this will be fun. There will be, like, some magical mermaids, and Tarzan will have to bump into them because the bad guys kidnap Jane or some crap. Yep. Uh, no. We start off with the Aquaticans, who are this water tribe, and because they are a dumb tribe people and are so stupid because they're not white. Um, <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. They're played by white people, but the characters aren't meant to be white. That's that's what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're not white, and therefore they're dumb tribe people that don't understand how gods work. No, no, no. But you've got to also preface that they are played by white people. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. They are... Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's white. <laughs> yes. So it's white people playing dumb tribe people. So essentially, they're mocking uh, tribe people oh, and course. saying they're dumb because they have this god Balu, not to be uh, confused with the bear from Jungle Book. I'm glad that I wasn't the only one who thought they were talking about Balu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's their god that they worship, but. Some white dude dresses up in a suit of their god, and the priest says, hey, that that's your god. And they're like, yep, we totally believe that and have no doubts about this at all. It's pretty fucking great. Uh-huh. And um, I loved, personally, I loved how every single shot of the god walking around was the same shot reused about <laughs> ten times in the same movie. That was my yeah. favorite part of the god thing. Oh, uh, my favorite part was it was so obviously a guy in a suit. <laughs> And it's like, no one questions this? Not a single person questions this? Well, one person does, because here's the thing, Zach. Baloo, he wants a wife, because he's just a white man in a suit. He wants a wife. And so, oh, here is Mara. Mara is a beautiful mermaid, and by mermaid I mean aquatican. You mean, uh, by aquatic, you just mean a regular person. <laughs> She's a regular person and played Not by an- a mermaid. no. She's a regular person. Um, she is a Mexican actress. There are a lot of like Mexican actresses in this yeah. movie. She is pretty good in this movie. But this movie was meant to kind of... It was meant to launch her career. It says, and introducing Linda Christian. Mm. But the problem is, this was her first movie. So she didn't have a whole lot of a career after this because she started with Tarzan and the Mermaids. Oof. Which is a shame. Uh, she was a Bond girl, uh, the first Bond girl in Ooh. the TV show version of Casino Royale. Oh, there you go. So she, she is technically the first ever Bond girl. So that's, you know, that's, that's quite good. But no one cares about that movie because it's a TV show from the 50s. So. <laughs> wow. I care. Anyway, she escapes. She just kind of runs off. Yeah, well, why why does she escape? Why does she need to escape, Sandra? Because the big god man's trying to marry her, but she's in love with Tico. Yes, who is just another guy. Doesn't really matter. He's not important to the plot, really. Now, I, I just want to explore this for a moment. 
All right. Let's say the evil guy's plan succeeds, right? And he gets to marry this chick. Does he have to wear the costume the whole time while they're banging? I was because thinking he doesn't about want to that. reveal the secret. Well, I mean, like, or does she get in the know, but she can't tell anyone? Well, what I wanted to know is like, is is she the, the first girl that he's married? Mm. Because if he keeps doing this, maybe she just gets added to like his harem in like a dungeon or some shit. She's locked down there forever. Which, Jesus. to be honest, like that sounds like they would do in the fifties, like a fifties. Sort of- yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I'm just like. How does this fuck? How does how does how does he get away with this shit? I think just at the time, the thing for adventure movies was a woman being forced to do things she don't want to do. Yep, and then the guy save her. Yep, thank God we've got our white savior here, uh, just who just so happens to be nearby. Because yeah, she she swims away mm. uh, because they're good swimmers. Um, and she swims and she swims until Tarzan is, he's doing a big old fish. He's fishing. Relatable. He's fishing in the sea. I regularly go to do a big old fish. Me too. I regularly do a big sloppy fish. Every- <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing uh, a fish and then he finds Mara and he's like, oh my God, it's a woman in the sea. I'm going to get her. But then she tries to run away. And then we get a five minute scene of them chasing each other in the water. Because every <laughs> single action scene in this movie goes on for way too fucking long. Because they've got to pad the movie out. It's true. And then they end it with 15 minutes of sports. Because they still don't know how to end the movie. Because they <laughs> still have to pad time. Because this movie is an hour long. We haven't got to the ending yet. We haven't We haven't got to the ending yet. <laughs> this is a 20 minute TV episode extended to an hour by random yeah, padding. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the real worst. <laughs> Worst crime of this movie is that it was like just extended the whole time. It's pretty bad. But um, yeah, they capture her and like uh, their uh, vaguely Spanish guy who who sings a lot of this film. Fucking Benji. Yeah, Benji. Benji. Um, his his starting singing was kind of bad, but then then I got used to it. I was like, oh, he's not too bad at singing. This is right. It was kind of the same as brute force. We have this thing of like. Basically just, like, D&D bards. Yeah. They just sing about the plot, and that's all they do. Yeah, but in Brute Force, the guy was good at singing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was Sir Lancelot. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, and in that, I was like, every time he was on, I'm like, damn, this guy has a good voice. Whenever this guy goes on, I'm like, ah, Benji's on screen. Yeah, well, this guy is a, you know, he's a white guy from New York pretending to be a Mexican yes. character. Yeah, presumably he's from previous Tarzans, and we don't know no, where he's, he's from. Not. This is Benji's first movie. What? Benji, I don't think, is in any of the other ones. No. <laughs> they tried to make him a thing, and it failed. Okay, that's the most surprising thing. I thought this was a regular character, because otherwise it makes no fucking sense for this character to be here. Well, because his whole thing is that he has a letter from Boy, who's the son. Yeah. Who's off at college or some shit. Yeah, And yeah. he's traveling to give them a letter for him, but then he just kind of joins in on the adventure because he's around. Yeah. Uh, he was kind of played off as the, like, the comic relief. It's like, oh, I guess he's replacing the boy in that matter. Maybe the boy was, like, doing... Ah, uh, okay. It makes sense now. It makes sense now. Because the movie script was written... Where they have Tarzan's son there, right? Or maybe. But of course they can't get the actor in for some reason. Yeah. And so they have to replace him with this character because he acts as like the token goofball, right? Because the whole ending scene, they have like a jousting. Yes. Where the jousting, they get this guy up to do this joust. And this is like a five, ten minute scene, right? It would make more sense if that was like Tarzan's son. And it's like, oh, they're young, they're silly, right? Yeah. So he's, he's like... Hey, Tarzan's son, you think you're so tough? Let's go do this joust thing, right? But of course they don't have it, so they just have this, like, token character to fill in all the roles of being a silly goofball. I think, I think you might, well, I mean, the singing was probably then added later as well, because it's yeah, like- Yeah, the sing was adding to make this character more likable, but I don't give a shit about him. So the Aquatican warriors come to take Mara away, and they do manage to do so. But Tarzan, you know, he puts up a fight. They take her away in a boat. Uh, he he chases after her for way too fucking long mm. um, by swinging from vine to vine, but very slowly because this guy was a swimmer and not known for. <laughs> 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 yeah, but stuff. you know, it's some vine swinging. You gotta have some vine swinging in your Tarzan movie. That's right, that's right. And um, in this scene, yeah, there's like a motorboat and stuff.
stuff. Um, and Zach, this is where we get to uh, the first crew member to die uh, in the production of this movie. Uh, one of the crew members was crushed by a motorboat in the making of this film. Um, this film, actually a really deadly movie to make. Uh, two people died. Whoa. One of them died on screen. We'll get to it later. <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus Christ. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That... That I was not expecting. Yeah, I should have given a trigger warning. But yeah, one of the crew members um, during one of the chase sequences and in this movie involving a boat was uh, crushed by a motorboat. Yeah, wow. Jesus. Okay, yeah. I repeat to that guy. That's no fun. It's pretty awful. And it's like the late 40s. This is a relatively low budget kind of production company. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Big rip. So Tarzan, he's off to the island to find Mara. In the meantime... Um, when Mara was hanging out with Tarzan and Jane, mm. she gave Jane a pearl and was oh like, Oh my god, this dumb pearl plot. <laughs> so bad. On my island, Jane, there are so many pearls. And Jane's like, we could sell this pearl for a lot of money. And then Benji's like, you're right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell people from the British colonies here in Africa to go to the island oh. and take all the pearls. Oh, oh no. And this, Why? and this is framed as a good thing, Zach. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's the worst bit. It's like, it's like they're having a moral quandary. It's like, oh, we shouldn't take this pearl. But if we did, we could sell it to the British and get lots of money. Oh, that would be such a good thing, because then we could fund all these things, and it's like, oh my god, oh, fuck. <laughs> god, no. Don't do that. Capitalism, why? And so they tell the British inspector, hey, there's so many pearls on this island, you should just go and take them. And so that's what they do. And then we get a quote, which is a fucking hilarious quote, where they are heading to the island, and they see, oh no, like, Tarzan's there, and, like, he's fighting people, and, um... The British guy who has, like, come along with them, he's like, well, I thought this was going to be a trading mission. Now I see it's going to be an adventure. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Oh, dear. But a plot of this movie is British people stealing the pearls from a small tribe on an island, and that's framed as a positive thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Not only that, that's a subplot (laughs) of the overarching plot, which is a white saviour coming in to save dumb tribe people from another white guy who has tricked them. This is a terrible movie. This is awful. (laughs) It's really bad. Fucking hell. So yeah, Tarzan finds the... uh, After swimming around a bunch, Mm -hmm. he finds the god statue uh, costume. This is fucking hilarious. This scene's hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, ha, this is their god, huh? I'm gonna put this on. Fuck it. At this point, he doesn't know that someone's dressing up as the god either. No, he just, he just like, puts it on. <laughs> he just puts it on. And this is so funny, because at this point, Jane has arrived. He walks out in the costume, and Jane's there, and he w- w- winks at Jane through the costume. She knows it's him. She's like, oh, my God, it's Tarzan. <laughs> and she keeps asking him yes or no questions. Yeah. And whenever it's a yes... He nods in the costume, yeah. but whenever he nods, the soundtrack goes, dur, dur. <laughs> Yep. Or something. Like, it follows his movements dur, dur. every fucking time he nods. Dur, dur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. Well, they have this whole thing, because this, this evil priest who's manipulating the tribe by, like, saying, oh, this is the god, right? Yes. And so the priest is like, hey, god, we're going to lock these people up, right? Uh, because that's their plan, and you're going to marry this thing. And the god's like, no. Mm. And then, of course, Jane figures it out, and Jane's like, oh, yeah, uh, and you want to free this lady, right? And the god nods, and it's like, oh, yeah, and you want to give us loads of money, and, you know. No, they specifically ask, shall we give the pearls to the British? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what she nods. asks. And I'm like, yeah, that's fucked up. That's the end of the movie. Mara's free now. And now we get 15 minutes of people drinking from coconuts and and playing sports. Absolutely. And it feels like an ending where, like, I'd say the ending is where the priest confronts Tarzan. It's like, you know, they would kill you if they found out you were in the costume. And Tarzan's like, you know, they would kill you if they found out I was in costume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's also an unsatisfactory ending, right? Well, the white guy who was in the costume is nowhere to be seen. We don't know where he is. Yeah, because he hasn't appeared yet in this... Well, like, he has appeared once, but, like, 
he he hasn't appeared again in the movie yet, so it's like, where is this guy? What's happening? What's happening? It doesn't matter, because it's time for sports, it's time for extreme sports, Zach. Sport time, yeah, let's go. Yeah, sports time. Sports time. Oh, sports. Gotta do some jousting. I did like the jousting, I thought that was fun. I was like, ah, that's cool, I'd like to do some of that. It's where they have two big canoes, but the canoes have like a platform at the front, like a diving board almost at the front. These dinghies like paddle towards each other with two people on the front of them and they try and knock the other person off with some long poles. And uh, the boy, or in this case, the guy that was replacing the boy, this random character that... Again, feels like it's like, oh, haha, it's this guy. He he always gets into silly hijinks, you know, that sort of thing. He gets roped into doing a joust. Oh, yeah, I think it's Tico. It's Tico that uh, jousts him as well. Mm, yeah, I uh, think who it is. was a character in this film. He is the, the, the love interest of the main girl, but he doesn't do anything throughout the entire film. He doesn't do anything. Uh, now, Zach, um, in this sports sequence as well, I already mentioned how someone was crushed by a motorboat, but other other stuff happened. Uh, the producer of the movie had a heart attack. Um, oh. Uh, and, and caused him to not be in, on set oh dear. for a bit of the movie. Johnny Weissmuller playing Tarzan, he uh, he experienced a pretty extreme case of sunburn. Uh, so he had to wear uh, makeup and stuff throughout this this movie uh, to stop him from obviously looking like he was sunburnt throughout the film. And in the scene, because Tarzan gets roped into doing a high dive where he jumps off the he jumps off a cliff down into the water. They filmed that for real. Um, that was with a stunt double do- though, and the uh, the stunt double died. <gasps> no, holy shit, that's so bad. Yep. Wait. They show a person dying on screen? Technically not. He survived the dive. The dive was fine. Okay. But when he hit the water, he was pulled into rocks, and that's when he died. So he doesn't die on screen, but you do see moments before the, the stunt double moments died. Moments before he died. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? That's so messed up. It's pretty fucked. Holy fuck. This movie is- I uh, no idea. This movie is- That is so fucked up. Yeah. This is literal last moments we see on screen is that dive. Holy fuck, that's fucked up. This is this is terrible. This is kind of like a Wizard of Oz situation, but the movie is bad. Yeah, imagine the Wizard of Oz, but this film is bad. Oh my god, this was not worth it. No. Two people didn't need to die. Someone suffer a heart attack and one guy get extreme sunburn for Tarzan and the mermaids. <laughs> this is I would not- have a heart attack too seeing this disaster. Jesus. So then the god reappears. The god reappears, but Tarzan isn't in the suit this time. And we're like, oh my god, the other guy's back. And the priest is like, a Baloo changed his mind. He wants to kill everyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like... Ah, uh, Blue was really nice two seconds ago for no reason, but now he's angry again, so now he's being evil again. And then Tarzan shows up, he swims over and is like, uh, hey, it's just a guy. Yeah, he takes that- well, first he fights a squid octopus monster oh, thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot. Two seconds before that, he has the battle, which is shown at the very start of the film. It is. Just like one shot of it, <laughs> yeah. which was very uh, Flash Gordon. Extremely Flash Gordon, because they they do that in Flash Gordon then as Luckily, well. Luckily, Tarzan has his jungle knife with him, yes. his iconic jungle knife, so he can, you know, impale this uh, poor octopus. The poor octopus just trying to defend its waters. From it's true. Tarzan. From white colonists. Yep. Um, uh, and then, yeah. Yep. Tarzan rocks up and, like, reveals that their god is just a guy. Um, so the the priest gets mauled by an angry mob. The priest gets mauled by an angry mob, and the guy in the god suit, Tarzan, just punches him so hard he flies off a cliff and crashes on rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we see and we see the like bad guy fall on like a uh, uh, like a ragdoll copy of him yeah. just fall onto these rocks. Very brutal death for the bad guy. And that's the movie. The movie ends with the monkey in a tiny canoe playing the guitar, and that's that's the end of Tarzan and the Mermaids. I was going to mention that it is iconic in Tarzan that the bad guy dies a horrible death. That's true. Because in the Disney one, uh, the bad guy dies by falling and getting hung by vines. He gets tangled in vines and it, like, snaps his neck. 
which is a very brutal death for the bad guy, which is the same in this film. A very brutal death for the bad guy in this film. Very brutal death. Look, in closing, here's my final thoughts of Tarzan and the Mermaid. It's fucking awful and don't watch it. That's my final <laughs> yeah, thought. Yeah. That's my closing thought. I feel very bad for picking this film up now because we're supporting this awful film. I like how I gave it an oldie before I learned about how horrible <laughs> this film was in treating the cast and crew members. Yep. Wow. Yep. That just goes to show how terrible this film was. I am sorry for picking it. I apologize. I would like to formally apologize <laughs> for picking this. I thought this was going to be a lighthearted adventure. I, I thought it was going to be like, oh, ha ha, they brought magic into the Tarzan world. There's, there's mermaids. Oh, this is so silly. This is so dumb. This is horrifying. This is, this is terrible. This is Fuck. incredibly racist. And also, people died. Racist and people died for this. Just so you could learn that it's okay for British colonizers to take everything. <laughs> to take all your pearls. Jesus Christ. I do like how they're called the Aquanites or some dumb shit. That was kind of funny. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. That it- <laughs> the, the Aquanites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is pretty funny, though. Fuck me. (laughs) When you walk through an art museum, what happens? You see some interesting things, you see some not so interesting things, (laughs) and if you're like me at all, you're probably a little bit sleepy. Well, grab a cafecito and listen up. It's Art Slice, a palatable serving of art history. I'm Russell Shoemaker. I'm Stephanie Duenas. We are not your daddy's art history (laughs) podcast. We are both artists, so we look at art history through that perspective. We cover the artists you know and those that have been ignored for so many different reasons. We look at the context of the time, we compare it to today. We don't dumb anything down, but, and this is a big but, we like to have a good time, okay? Nos gusta to goof (laughs) around, all right? We have hungry pantry mons that might startle you. It's a long story. We we feed them our materials. Art is just a visual language, so in order for us to interpret what we think it's saying, we hijack the work. Right. How do you like that for an art heist? Exactly. And ultimately, we decide if it belongs in our Art Slice Museum on top of the Arts okay, so, so if this all sounds like. good to you, join us on Art Slice, a palatable serving of art history. Let's come up with a remake. All right, a remake. No one dies on set is my first premise for the remake. Do we come up with a remake of this or just Tarzan? I just, uh, I think we just do Tarzan, right? Well, then it can be Tarzan. Like we have the the rock play Tarzan. It's like Tarzan meeting Jane. Well, we can call the movie Tarzan and Jane. Tarzan and Jane. The movie's called Tarzan and Jane. Um, so we've got Tarzan played by The Rock. I like that idea. Yeah. Who's Jane? Like, are we having them fall in love? Is that what we're doing? Is this kind of like a rom-com situation, but it's in the jungle and he's Tarzan? Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, y- yes. But we could make it. We could. We could do something. Make it about climate change, right? Make it about deforestation. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's set in the modern day. It's set in the modern day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't think we could have a Tarzan in, in the modern. That doesn't make any sense. I absolutely, you can. It's like we could have a group of people who are like we we've disassociated ourselves with technology and all that, right? And then there's this jungle kid who you know grew up in the jungle. Whatever he's. It's like an abandoned child, you know? He doesn't know about technology and stuff. And then he's discovered, classic, and it's like, oh, he's he's sort of brought back into society, but he's still Tarzan. He's still Tarzan. And then Jane comes in and, oh, no, she's lost phone reception. Oh, no, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's totally, oh, my God, I don't have any phone reception. How am I going to get back to my dad? This sounds fucking terrible, but all right, let's do <laughs> Well, that's what Tarzan is. We're remaking Tarzan, and Tarzan is terrible. It's true. <laughs> and would work. All right, scratch this, Sajo. Instead of it being set now, distant future. Future Tarzan, cyberpunk Tarzan, same universe as cyberpunk Robin Hood. Absolutely. No, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first half of the film, it's played off as if it's, like, in the the 1900s. (gasps) And then it's revealed that it's, like, a- Yeah, then it's revealed it's, like, yeah, it's, like, a Planet of the Apes situation. Yeah, and, and, it's not- just a jungle on Earth, and Earth is a cyberpunk city. No, it's like the part of Godzilla versus Kong, where Kong's in Skull Island, but then Kong's like, wait, Skull Island, that's just a screen. This is a fake Skull Island. It's a fake jungle. It's a fake jungle. Tarzan is an experiment. 
That that could be interesting. I I was thinking it was on a different planet than Earth, and oh. it's like a it's like a like a Mars colony. But of course, it's like this jungle planet, mm. and that's where you get the sort of plot. And then like deforestation, because like this new colony. Essentially, I'm doing like the Avatar thing where they have uh, yeah. uh, people coming in to colonize the planet, and Tarzan's like, "Well, that's fucked up." But then, like, yeah, we could have, like, Cyberpunk. And also, we could have him as an experiment. <gasps> oh, they're experimenting on him to see if people could live on the planet's surface or whatever. Yes. Well, maybe, well, maybe, maybe, yes, it's, it's an experiment then. Because if it's set on, like, Mars, we have him. Well, I don't think it's on Mars. I think it's on, like, a distant planet. A distant planet that's kind of like a jungle, but with, like, there's aliens and stuff instead of monkeys maybe or like monkey aliens they can be monkeys there as well why not but yeah yeah um, yeah they're like there's there's some like ape like monkey things well then I, I think what it is is the rock as a kid went up with his parents tarzan went up with his parents who were there to see if it was livable mm. but then his parents died yeah i think there's like a crashed colony ship a crashed right? ship the parents died in the crash yeah. of the drop ship or whatever the fuck happened. Tarzan is raised by the alien monkeys. And however many years later, 30 something years later, we've got Jane and a group of explorers are finally returning to this planet to see if it is livable now. Um, and then I reckon, so for, for Jane, playing Jane, you mentioned Avatar earlier. I reckon Jane should be played by Zoe Saldana. Ooh. You know, Gamora, she's Natiri in in Avatar. I think she'd be a good Jane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she's a cool sort of action-y person. Yeah. Because she she would work well as, like, the leader of the scientist people who are, like, the dad can be, like, the the scientist guy can be like, oh, I don't know about this. We, we got to be careful. We got to follow protocols. It, it could be dangerous out there. Mm. Who knows what could live in these jungles? That's right. We need some other, we need some other, um, other characters then. So the dad. We need the bad guy, uh, obviously like the industrialist hunter? colonizer. Yeah. The reason the scientific, uh, ship has been funded to go over there is to investigate whether it's habitable or, uh, whether the trees can be harvested yes. as a resource, right? Yes. And so this guy, he's like the, the evil uh, industrial baron, but he's also just a stereotypical British hunter guy <laughs> for no reason. Who? Yeah, who would be a good kind of bad bloke? We could go like Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He always kind of feels like a hunter dude. Yeah. But I think we already put him in something else as a hunter. Anthony Hopkins? Ah, he's too old now though, isn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, he could be old. I don't know. Oh, 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 Chris Evans. He is a good bad guy. Yeah, he would be so funny as a bad guy. Oh, then we could have like a twist bad guy. Because then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm funding this expedition for stuff. And then it's like, we could have a little reveal where Chris Evans is like evil. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to hunt these <laughs> monkeys and stuff. <laughs> but he's all like, he's like a sociopath. So he's all like jolly and happy at the same time. Um, now, instead of casting humans for the next, uh, the remaining characters, unless there's, like, an, another human character that you would like to cast, I'd also like to cast the voice of Tarzan's parents. Ooh, okay. We've got Kerchak and we've got Kala. Oh, voice actors. Yeah, we haven't done voice actors, uh, before, have we? Oh, I didn't, I just meant we just cast people to be the voice but we can cast actual voice actors yeah oh you're you want to pull a studio you want to pull a studio being like instead of getting voice actors we just get regular actors to do voice acting i mean we could get fucking like i was i was so excited to do voice actors sandra i was like oh yeah we could get like tara strong or, or matthew mercer like he he'd be funny you know oh there's there's some there's some great voice actors out there yeah like fucking like nolan north the guy who does does uh who does like nathan drake get him in no never mind never mind but we're not gonna do that no. instead we're just gonna get regular actors so chris pratt <laughs> <laughs> chris pratt is both of them no um oh it's both <laughs> uh, uh rob schneider should be uh should be uh Kurchak. yeah yep uh, absolutely well who's th who's gonna be our director of the film 
That's a very good question. Yeah, because we need a we need to get a director because maybe the, uh, the director can voice act something. Who directed Jumanji? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, that is Jake Kazdan, who is the son of Lawrence Kazdan, who wrote Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Whoa! And the Raiders of the, the Lost Ark and Force Awakens and stuff. I think they both wrote Solo together from memory. Ah. That's kind of the vibe that I want, but that would also just be another Jumanji movie, though. I like it. I like it. Okay. Because it, it, there you go. It's got, not only has it got like Jumanji ties, but it's also got sci-fi vibes, mm, you know? It's both the it's also, Yeah. Because we're doing, star. you got Star Wars and Jumanji. That's kind of what we're doing here. Oh, and also a little bit like Indiana Jones, because I want that adventure movie vibe as well. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Harrison Ford as, mm-hmm. as Kerchak. I, I like Mark Hamill more. Okay. I think Mark Hamill is cooler. And I think he would be more willing, because yeah, he is a he uh, he is a voice actor as well as a brilliant actor. You know what? You're right. It's set in space, and Harrison Ford would just throw a fit if he had to say any more space words. <laughs> so <laughs> you're right. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's the thing, right? Harrison Ford is done with sci-fi bullshit. Yeah. Um, who's Carla? I did recently see Transformers: Rise of the Beasts, and one of the Transformers is played by Michelle Yeoh. Who is fantastic in everything, but she's a really good voice actor as well. I think she'd be really good. Uh, is there any other character that, that you want to cast? We can do an- another one if you want. Um, no, I think that's, uh, oh. what, what have we got so far? We got Tarzan, we got Jane. We got Tarzan, we got Jane, we got the Hunter, we got uh, Tarzan's two parents. We could do the Professor, which is Jane's dad. Yeah, um, who is an important character? Or, or you could do one of the, like, alien people, but I think... I think maybe you just do the dad. I think the dad. Well, the other characters in like the animated one, which is kind of what I'm drawing from, is yeah. You've got the elephant. No, which would just be Aquafina. You just put Aquafina as the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that is who we put in that role for this film. Obviously, space elephant. So yeah, uh, it's it's revealed that they're actually carnivores. <laughs> uh, that's the that's the difference. Uh but yeah, the professor, professor Archimedes. <laughs> and he is he's got to be like generic sciencey guy generic science like a guy. small guy wearing glasses short oh D- danny devito obviously danny DeVito. no we're not no. putting danny devito in another no one. we put him in too many stuff no 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 um oh it would be so fun to get like michael j fox because he was in back to the future and now he's in the professor role mm. ah. I don't think he'd be able to do it, but fuck, that would be so good. No, he he wouldn't be able to do it, but he would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ice Cube. I want Ice Cube. <laughs> we could do Ice Cube. Yeah, we could do Ice Cube. He, he ice has cu- done acting in films. <laughs> he is an actor. And it would be really funny to have him in, like, glasses and stuff and be the nervous scientist. But then, like, shit hits the fan and he's like, you know what? Fuck this. And he pulls out, like, a mega gun. <laughs> The problem with Ice Cube is he's oh, like he's he is nine years older than Zoe Saldana, so like as that her dad. True. But also in Indiana Jones and the Third Crusade, Sean Connery was like ten years older than Harrison Ford. Like, yeah, you know, you can hide it. There's ways to hide it. Yeah, yeah, you could make him look a bit older. I think absolutely. You just put a bit of grey in his hair, give him a bit of lines, put the glasses on. I think you could believe it, absolutely. This sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but, but it I sounds really this. funny. Ice Cube tried to play this meek old guy. Yeah. We have to follow protocols. We gotta do everything right, you know? And then, yeah. I think Ice Cube is pretty funny. He's pretty funny as a professor. Well, there we go. That is the episode. That's our remake of Tarzan. We've got we've got the same director of Jumanji 3 and f- uh, 2 and 3. We got, we got Z- uh, t- Dwayne The Rock Johnson Tarzan. We got Jane Porter. She's played by Zoe Saldana. We got we got, got Chris Evans. He's a bad bloke. We got Mark Hamill and Michelle Yeoh playing two monkeys, and we've got Ice Cube as as a crazy professor boy. Yeah, that's our that's the version of Tarzan that we want to see. Hollywood, give it to us, or we will stop going and watching the shit the shit movies. And we want money. Give us give us royalties of your remake of Tarzan. And that's the whole bloody episode of Tarzan and the Mermaids. We, we, the episode's longer than the movie. Fuck you. Um, yep, it is. <laughs> that is true. If you like the show, we are on Stuff and Things. First of all, thank you so much for listening. 
Yeah, thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, we are on all the socials and all the platforms and all the stuff and things at Oldie Buddy Goody Pod on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, Oldie Buddy Goody Pod at gmail.com if you want to email us. We are also on patreon.com forward slash Oldie Buddy Goody Pod where you can get bonus episodes. Up there right now is the fourth episode of our Cage Arama series, which is a series we're doing looking at movies by Nicolas Cage. It's the second year we've done it, it's a fun time. Um, we have already decided that we're doing it again next year, so, uh, jump on board that K-drama. The episode out right now is on Mum and Dad, which is a horror, and then the next one is National Treasure, so that's a big one. Ooh, that does sound very exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and that is all the stuff and things that I've got to mention. You can get, like, some ad-free, and I usually put the episodes up early as well for the main show, so that's all, that's all up there. Um, but next, 1949... Yes, and we've got some interesting uh, movies for you to choose from for, to end this sort of decade. Yes. We have the mighty Joe Young. Oh, it, is he mighty? Uh, well, he's a gorilla, so uh, yes. Oh my god. It's about a gorilla who is taken away from Africa to perform in a nightclub, and he longs for the wilderness. Uh, one night when he's intoxicated by three drinks- Oh my he go- god. He loses control, and the court orders his execution. Oh my goodness. Yep. That sounds amazing. We've got Stray Dog, Kurosawa- could head over to Japan to check out a noir crime film by Kurosawa. I don't know. I Ooh. feel like if we're going to do Kurosawa, we might do one of the big ones. I might leave Kurosawa for a bit. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. If you haven't had enough of white saviors, there's Africa Screams. I've seen Africa Screams. Oh, there you go. It's two booksellers from the city encounter a soldier with a, a visual impairment, a ravenous lion, and a tribe of cannibals. Yep. As they set off and look for diamonds in Africa. It is a Abbott and Costello movie, that one. Um, ah. So it's the two of them fucking around in the jungle. I've seen it. I don't remember it being very good. I just picked the two films that looked like they were very similar to this film we watched. They were based in the African jungles. <laughs> what about I Was a Male War Bride? <laughs> what? Mm, an army woman stationed overseas tries to get her French husband back home. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, thank you. <laughs> um, what about oh whiskey galore? Oh my god, whiskey galore! Whiskey galore. And with an explanation mark, might I add? Oh. During World War Two, the tiny Scottish island of Todd's Day. Runs out of whiskey! Oh no! <gasps> they ran My out God. of whiskey. When the freighter SS cabinet minister runs uh, aground nearby during a heavy fog, the islanders are delighted to learn that the cargo consists of 50,000 cases of whiskey. Right, so they gotta go get the whiskey. That sounds fun. This is the stupidest plot I've ever heard of. Fantastic. I want to watch this at some point. I do want to watch that. That sounds really good. Or would you prefer the 2016 remake of this film, which <laughs> apparently god. exists? Oh my god, they remade it. Whew, it does not have high ratings. That sounds amazing, yeah. and um, I really do want to watch that, <laughs> yeah. but uh, what I'm picking instead, Zach, I'm picking something not that funny. I'm- oh, okay. We're going serious now. We're, we're, we're avoiding funny. Look, last time I tried to pick funny, and it turned out very bad, so that might be a good idea. Yeah, and I'm going, you know, uh, last week we checked out an American noir, an American film noir set in a prison. I want to go across the pond, check out what the Brits were doing with their film noirs, and watch a very popular movie by the name of The Third Man. Ooh. Mm. Mm. What's that? Ooh, it's set in post-war Vienna. Oh my. It is a movie about murder. <gasps> mm. Murder. Murder. Corruption investigating. You're you're not talking about what happened on set at the Tarzan movie. No, are you? no. Okay, okay. Thank God, thank God. Uh, just double check. No one died in the making of this film, right? The third man. Ah, uh, not from what I can tell. No. 
Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then absolutely, I'm on board. It's also like, it's like, it's it's an Orson Welles film, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. It stars some of the people from Citizen Kane. I reckon, I reckon it'd be a bit, be, be, be fun time. Yeah, I'd be down. This sounds, this sounds interesting. This sounds very different from what we've done before. So I'm, I'm down to try it. Whiskey Galore sounds like a lot of fun. But uh, after Tarzan and the Mermaids, I want something hard, dark, and broody. <laughs> Don't we all, Sandro? Don't we all? All right. Next week. Oh my god, I'm picking a good movie. Uh, the Third Man. We'll do that next week. That's the episode. That's the episode on the on the podcast. Thank you so much for watching, Zach. You got to skip it out of our body, and I've got to continue on my adventure through the time. The time. The time. The only time that we have. Yes. All right. See you later. (laughs) Oh, my God. There's noses coming out of his ear holes. I don't know what the heck that was supposed to be. Oh, yes. I was in the middle of calling the police. Oh, no. (gasps) I'm not going to do it. I'm not opening the portal. I kind of want to see what he does. Oh. Police. That was a lot of lead up to some very (laughs) not exciting just like the Tarzan movie you guys watched, am I right? Because <laughs> there was like 11 movies towards that one. <laughs> uh, police, please arrest this man. He doesn't have a license for being here. <laughs> you want to have a license to be in this park? Absolutely, I've got mine. Oh, that is a license for being in a park. It says right here, park license. Am I going to get a parking fine? <laughs> 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 oh. I also have a gun. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs>